In this video, we're going to discuss adaptation and variation and how those terms apply to our evolution unit. So first of all, what is evolution? And that is a change in the characteristics of a species over time. It relies on genetic diversity and it happens through the process of natural selection, which we'll spend a lot of time discussing in later lessons as well. So what is an adaptation? So that is a structure, a behavior, or a physiological process that helps an organism survive and reproduce in their environment. So an example of a structural adaptation would be camouflage, so stick bugs as our example here. A physiological adaptation would be the ability to hibernate during the winter months. A structural adaptation would be mimicry, so pretending you're something, look like something else so that a predator might not eat you. So mimicry is actually quite a strategy. So some species actually resemble a more harmful species in color or structure. So in this example, monarch butterflies, because the caterpillars are, they feed on milkweed, which is toxic, monarch butterflies taste bad because of the stored up toxins. Um, so birds, when they eat a monarch, will forever remember that an orange and black butterfly is not tasty. Viceroy butterflies don't taste bad. They're perfectly edible. However, they look so similar to birds as they look so close to a monarch butterfly, to the bird, that they will be avoided as well. A variation is a structural functional or physiological difference between individuals. So as you know, in our class and amongst the human population, there are all kinds of variations. Some people are tall, some people are short, some people have curly hair and so on. And environmental conditions will determine whether a variation will become an adaptation. So peppered moths is our example and we'll, do, we'll actually do an activity with this. So they come in two different variations, dark peppered moths and light peppered moths. The dark pepper moths don't show up very well on dark trees, and the white pepper moths don't show up very well on white trees. So depending on their environment, white moths might be favored or dark moths might be favored. So their variation could be an adaptation. So where do our variations come from? They come from mutations. They come from our DNA, and they come from sexual reproduction, which is Part of that is through the random assortment of chromosomes during meiosis, but also through crossing over during meiosis. So that's how we get these variations. So again, mutations, they can be good and they can also be not so great. So mutations, the definition for them are changes in your DNA and they can be harmful to an individual or they can be beneficial. So these can be the starting point of genetic variation. A harmful mutation might cause the cells to die or to malfunction or even become cancerous, causing the cells to re reproduce too quickly before they get a chance to develop and specialize the way they should. A beneficial mutation might allow for a selective advantage, allowing an organism to be more likely to survive and reproduce. So for instance, if it was really advantageous to be six feet tall, your mutation, if you had a mutation that made you six feet tall, suddenly you might be favored to survive where all the people that are less than six feet tall won't be favored. So it actually would prevent you from being able to survive if that were an, a beneficial mutation. One type of mutation is antibiotic resistant bacteria. So bacteria can reproduce so quickly and allows for random mutations to provide selective advantages. So an example are bacteria that are able to survive an antibiotic treatment. Because they reproduce rapidly, the mutation is selected for and was present in the next generation because the antibiotic resistant bacteria survived where those without the mutation didn't. And an example of a bacteria that's resistant to antibiotics is methylene resistant staphylococcus aureus or MRSA. It's a, a bacteria that is prevalent in hospitals and is quite a problem um, in treating when people 
are in hospital, they could get this infection and then have a hard time treating it.